Hello guys, my name is Caleb and this is my dog Nikita. He is an adolescent animal. I'm going to show you guys my wood shop. Come on in. So this is the wood shop here. This is where we manufacture yurts as well as other things that we want to make. Over here is where we do lumber storage. It's a bit messy right now, but that's part of the process. Keep things too organized and you don't know where they are. Over here, what we're doing is we're working on a bunch of rafters. And so we're about halfway through the process of mitering both ends before we router um, and add the notches and put them through the time saver. Coming around, around, along the side here, um, this is the miter station. Um, also where a lot of the tool storage goes. I have a 12 inch combination DeWalt miter saw. Um, I like it, it's pretty heavy duty, pretty industrial. It's great for working a lot of product, a lot of rafters through at once. Um, under here is where I keep a lot of my carpentry tools. Um, this is probably my favorite tool. This is the magnesium skill saw. This is great for doing framing. It's also a really good weight. A lot lighter than a lot of the other skill saws out there. This is my newest tool. This is an older Akita beam saw. Um, this is great for cutting six by material in one pass. Um, you know, tools <coughs> are kind of like Pokemon cards. You know, you start buying them and then you start looking out what else is out there. And I've uh, been looking for one of these for about two years now. It's a year and a half and I found one and it's sweet. Over here is where we do our charging station. Um, even though my dog is named Makita and I'm wearing a Makita shirt, I use predominantly Milwaukee tools. That's part of the thing. Underneath is the Festool zone. Um, there's Festool is kind of like if Elon Musk created power tools. Um, they're really nice and there's a couple tools that they have that are just super killer and you know you really can't do that process with anything else. Primarily would be the domino joiner, which we use to make all of our panel and sal doors. Um, also would be um, the track saw. Um, Makita now makes a track saw similar, but what's great about it is it's got these several different tracks here, and you can do um, long straight cuts when we're doing the three degree bevel on the bottom of the doors and the in swing of the doors. It's killer to be able to just line that up and go for it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, where we're at right now is Clamptown, USA. Bar clamps are super important for doing laminations. This is a lamination I did yesterday. I just pulled it out of the wide belt. So what I'm doing with this is creating lower panels that'll go in our 3.0 panel and style doors. Um, this is a Western Red Cedar, um, and we, the reason we use it is it, it holds up really well. Um, and exterior applications. It's got a natural mold and mildew resistance as well as rot resistance. This door right here is the first one um, that our intern slash um, scribe slash fledgling CNC operator built and I think he did a bang up job. Say hi Galen. Over here you can see some French doors that are nearing completion. I just got both lights in and next I'll be glazing um, in both lights and adding the weather stripping on the front on the back side similar you know to our other doors but with of course the astrical that I made out of um, vertical grain fur white oak threshold um, this is that same process of door building where we do a double laminated cedar with opposing grain got the radius of the 20-foot yurt that'll be going on um, this is my powermatic 8 inch joiner Pretty sweet tool. I'm going to be upgrading it to a helical head at some point here. Um, it's, it's a give joiner. Um, it's pretty sweet. Over here is where we have our board that kind of keeps uh, someone organized of kind of who, what, where. Um, yeah, and just, you know, the orders that we have for the yurts on the board. Over here, I've got my five horsepower uh, Delta Unisaw with the Beesmeyer fence. This thing is a workhorse. It's awesome, a lot better now that we've hooked it up to the dedicated dust ports. Coming around here, this is my uh, 1987 42 inch wide belt sander. Um, this thing is a badass machine. It was a real pain to get it in here, but uh, now that we're in here, 
you know? It's, it's just killer. So it's got one giant belt with a conveyor belt. Um, and we feed all the product through it and it sands it up on both sides and, you know, just saves a whole lot of time. Around here, I got a 1980 something, seven horsepower planer. This thing is sweet, but also cost me a lot of money to repair a lot. Um, this is the dust collection system. Uh, this is sweet. I just uh, piped in piping that I got used at the restore and it keeps the shop a whole lot cleaner. Um, not only that, but our wide belt sander really doesn't function unless you have a pretty substantial dust collection system to hook it up to. Over here, I've got my Powermatic Shaper with a bell saw power feeder on it. This is how we put the profile on all the lattice work when it comes off the CNC. Um, over here, I got my 1954 um, Powermatic disc sander. It's a three-phase tool. And that pretty much concludes the shop tour.